Okay, the biblical truth of our hymns today, the fairest Lord Jesus. Fairest Lord Jesus. We're up to 14, 15 hymns now, and you have not really, rarely seen the name Jesus. And we start off, Lord Jesus. Ruler of all nature, O oh, thou art God and man the Son. Well, you wouldn't find the Jehovah Witnesses singing this one, putting God and Son together. Thee will I cherish makes it personal. And again, you got this singing Sunday morning in a church service, and you got a worldly Christian, you got an unsaved person, thee will I cherish. Now, that would be a lie. Imagine a worldly Christian singing that, but I mean, if you're dearest loving the Lord and want to do right, such as a man that does and obeys and reads and his Bible and prays, thee will I cherish. Who do you cherish? God and man, the son. The fairest Lord Jesus. Thee will I honor. Cherish and honor. And that goes above and more for a, for a, a marriage. A happy marriage is one not, you know, the wife cherishes and honors the husband, and the husband cherishes and honors the wife, though that is necessary. But when you got a husband that cherishes and honors God the Father and God the Son, with the wife that honors and cherishes God the Father, God the Son, and each other, you got a remarkable marriage there. You got a marriage that will succeed. And all the cherish and the honor of worldly Christians in the world today. You find them on little cards. You find them on posters. You find them on album covers. You find them on magazines. You find them in the newspaper. And you're not going to find the cherishment of the honor in the world of God the Father and God the Son. In any worldly means. It's something that comes from the heart. Though my soul's glory, joy, and crown. The glory of the soul that I'm not going to hell no more. The joy of the soul that I am forever and forever going to be before God the Father and God the Son and hopefully to earn a crown. If you love and cherish and honor and glory and joy in God the Father and God the Son, this would be a crown for you. Fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in blooming garp of spring. Kind of sounds to me a little naturist there. And this is a good hymn, but not really the best, of my opinion. And who cares about my opinion? We know what opinions like. They're like armpits. This seems awfully naturistic. But it gives glory to God and gives glory to Jesus Christ. And I said 14 hymns so far. 15. And you have not really seen the name of Jesus. Let's give it that much credit. But it loves Jesus. The name again. Watch. Jesus is fairer. What, can, what one praise can I give about this hymn? It mentions J-E-S-U-S. -S. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. And that name is here. And it's a name that's not found in many hymns. Supposed to be Christian. How can they forget the name of Jesus? Well, Jesus is better than the, the, the nature. God is in the trees, the rocks, and the bushes. That's what some people think. And if you have a worldly person in a church, a unsaved man, and who is involved in God's in the nature and God's in the, uh, verse 2 would really lean to their asset of God being in the nature. 
Fair are the meadows, fair are still the woodlands, robed in blooming garb of spring. But Jesus is fair. Now, if they would get that over the trees, the rocks, and the hills, and get that Jesus is fair. You like the woods, you like the, the, the ground, you like the waterfalls, you like the river. There's nothing wrong. It's well. I like waterfalls. I like certain things out there. But Jesus is fair. Some people love the ocean. Some people love the mountains. But Jesus is fair. Let's stress that more. All the creation. I mean, if there's ever a, a natural event I would ever love to see would be those northern lights. The aurora borealis. And if I ever did got to see, get to see, I must remember that Jesus is fair. Jesus is pure. Realize the rocks, the dirt, the water, the ground has been cursed since Genesis 3. And yet Jesus, again, the name appears in this hymn, again. Though Jesus has been touched by man's hands by spitting, by pulling the beard, by the cat of nine tails, by the nails, by the spear, by the crown of thorns. Yet Jesus has been and will always be pure, sinless perfection, the righteousness of God, the righteousness that we need to be saved. And Jesus, again, mentioned throughout this hymn. I, one thing I love about this hymn, Jesus, 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 who makes the woeful heart to sing. You ever just break out in a hymn in your own heart that's not in the hymn books, it's not been set by other men? Have you ever just from your heart sang your own lyrics? I have. Many times. Fair is the sunshine. Fairer still the moonlight and all the twinkly starly hosts. Isn't it great? You ever see those pictures of Hubble? Those are those glad galaxies out there, those stars out wonderful. Ever see with the moon? Ever get a bright, bright white moon in the middle of the night? Ever have that moon just light up your bedroom? You ever watch the sunrise? Again, we get to the naturistic, and maybe the naturistic of this hymn is to show Jesus shines brighter. And when we read John chapter 1, he's the light. When we read the Gospel of John, he's the light of the world. When we read Genesis 1, and God said, let there be light, and that's Jesus. The light, the glorious light. As I look up a verse here, John chapter 3, let me get there. John 3, 19, this is what I call my cockroach uh, sermon. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh the light that his deeds may that his deeds should be reproved. Now what is that? That's a cockroach. You ever get up in the middle of the night, go in the kitchen, turn on the light or in the bathroom turn, and those things just run off. That's man in his wickedness. That's man in his sin. That's my cockroach. My priest every once in a while at the farmer's market, I call them cockroaches. But with all that, the light of Jesus Christ. And men in their sins, oh, I don't want to see that. Oh, I don't want that light. Get that light out of here. Get it out of here. That's why they hate preaching. Above the sun, above the stars, above the moon, Jesus shines brighter. 
It's a kick to it's a kick in the pants to those nature lovers. Save the whales, save the manatee. Oh, worship the sunrise, worship the sunset. Oh, the beautiful moon. No, oh, let's sing about the blue moon. Let's sing about the praises of the moon. Let's give honor to the rocks, our pet rocks. Let's give honor to the trees, oh, the tree. And yet Jesus is fairer. Jesus shines brighter. And in Jesus will I cherish. Jesus shines pure. Again, he's pure. You know what pure is? I'll give you a good definition. This may not be Webster's uh, definition, but my definition of pure is it has been untouched by man. And yet again, Jesus has been touched by man. He touched the leprosy men. He touched those that were blind. He touched those that were in sin. He touched those that bled. He touched those who had ailments. He touched men that were dead, and yet he's still sinless. He is still pure. Nothing, nothing can compare to Jesus Christ being touched by man and still coming out pure. Nothing. And if you got up in a mountain, the snow melts, and you got that little river flowing down, you think that water is pure, you think it's good, it's been under a curse because of Adam and Eve, Genesis 3. Then all the angels, heaven can boast. All the angels in heaven boast about Jesus Christ. They're not going to boast about Baptists. They're not going to boast about Christians, but the Christ. We're all going to get to heaven. We're going to sing about Jesus. Not of works. At least any man should boast. I ain't going to heaven to boast what, about, what I've done. Who cares what I've done? It's all done by what Jesus has done. We're not going to go hug the, the tree of life. We're not going to go save no owls. There'll be no whales. Be Jesus. A beautiful Savior. It's kind of odd because Isaiah 53 says there's no beauty that we desire him. When he came unto his own, when he came unto the world, and the world that he made did not know he was, when he walked on this planet for 33 and a half years, there was no beauty in him that he should be desired. He has been in torments. He has been in tribulations. He has been in tears because of man. Oh, if I were to take my last breath and be absent from the body or present with the Lord, or the rapture would happen in my time, I would see Jesus, the beautiful Savior. Again, if you got this hymn being sung in the church, that there are lost people, there are worldly people, they are not beautiful Savior. He cannot be beautiful unless he is your Savior. If you deny and reject him, he's not beautiful. He's despised and rejected, Isaiah 53. Lord of the nations. Can you really say that of America, that Jesus Christ is the Lord of this nation? Can you say that Jesus Christ is the Lord of the United Nations? Can he be the Lord of the Middle East? That must be a future tense. This him must jump forward into when he reigns on David's throne in the city Jerusalem in the nation in the land of the children of Israel that they will have their land without the United Nations without the Muslims without the Middle East without the PLO but those that love the Lord Jesus Christ son of God son of man 100% God 100% man Jehovah Witness can't sing that no way no way could you have in a Jehovah Witness uh, a hall. They never call it church. They call it hall. All right, we're going to sing today. What are we going to sing as Jehovah Witnesses? We're going to sing Paris, Lord Jesus. Well, we can't because he's not God. He's God to me. I can sing it. You don't want me to sing. Glory and honor again to who? God, the Son, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. 100% God, 100% man, and I can't explain it. Pure. Even the Son of Man, 100% human. Pure without sin, without spot. 
If he had any impureness, if he had any sin, if he had any defilement from Adam, he could not save my soul. He could not be my savior. That's why no pope can save your soul. A pope is a sinner. Your preacher is a sinner. He is of the family of Adam. He is born into sin and he can't save you. He's not pure. He's not the savior, but Jesus Christ is. Glory to God. Glory and honor. Not to your pastor. Glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Glory and honor not to a pope or a priest, but to Jesus Christ, our great high priest. Praise and adoration. Now let's look at a church for a moment. Let's look at a church, any church. Pick any denomination. What is their praise? What is their adoration? What is the main focus of that church when they meet? Who gets the glory? Who gets the honor? Who gets the cherishment? Who gets the singing? Is it the fairest Lord Jesus or is it the fairest look at how good I am? Is it the fairest ruler of our denomination? It is all about man or is it about the fairest Lord Jesus? Does it make you feel good or does it make your heart bleed? Adoration now and forevermore be thine goes back to Jesus, not me, not man. Jesus is better, he's brighter, he's purer than the seasons, the times, and the universe. Oh, we're looking to Mars. No, look to Jesus. Oh, I want to hug a tree. No, look to hug Jesus. And it even says even the angels cannot praise Jesus enough. We're going to have all eternity. Listen, listen. The day I got saved, April 21st, 1987, is began the time I started worshiping and praising Jesus Christ. And that will take from that time to all eternity. There are angels made before Genesis 1. We don't know when the angels were created. We don't know that there was no time, there was no day in the eternity before man. Before Genesis 1. And yet after the eternity of Genesis, uh, Revelation 20, where well, there'll be no more time again, and we go off into eternity afterwards. The angels have eternity before. They have the time that is man today, uh, 4,000, 5,000 years, and you'll have eternity forever. And the angels cannot boast, cannot praise Jesus Christ enough. And I just jumped on the bandwagon on April 21st, 1987. And I will not have enough time with all time gone away for all eternity. I will not have enough time for the fairest Lord Jesus in praise. The better, the brighter, the purer, not hugging the trees, not loving a whale, it's not protecting the bees, it's not thinking about the owls, it's thinking about Jesus, the creator of all. A lost man singing beautiful Savior. No, it's not beautiful to him. Isaiah 53 again says about that lost man in Jesus, there's no beauty. You know what the lost man looks at the beauty of? Ezekiel? The beauty of Satan. The Bible speaks about that anointed cherub, how beautiful he was. That's the beauty the world seeks after. And so when we set forth fair Lord Jesus in a congregation of lost worldly Christians, we make them lie. We make them sing a lie. And yet, if he listens to the lines one and three, he will get the gospel and the beauty of Jesus Christ. The gospel is found in lines 1, 2, and 3, the stanzas. That Jesus Christ suffered and died as God. Jesus Christ suffered and died as the Son of Man. He's my Savior. By the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Acts 20:28 20, says that blood is God's blood and that blood that the Bible speaks about is the blood that is found in Jesus Christ who is God and God alone. 100% God, 100% man. That's Maybe the song leaders are... Maybe the song leaders out refrain. Yeah, right. 
Maybe the song leaders out refrain lost men to sing. Maybe they should make a, a little introduction to the, to this hymn before being sung. Maybe they should express to Jesus Christ. Maybe they should tell the lost people in the congregation, look and read and listen only. Read and listen to this hymn. Listen to the words of this hymn. Maybe lost men will never come to a church. Fair is Lord Jesus. It's Jesus of the cross and it's Jesus of the millennium. It is the son of God and it's the son of man. It is God manifested in the flesh. There is no other but Jesus Christ. There is no in here in this in this hymn about worship to the pastor. There is no pope missing. The pope is missing from this from this hymn. I myself and me are missing from this set to what we give God to the glory. Widely praising to the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be sung in the churches. And it rebukes, like I said, it sounds naturist, but it rebukes the God of the nature. Because, yea, God made the trees, God made the rocks and the whales and everything like that. But Jesus is fairer. Jesus shines brighter. Glory and honor, not to the creation, but to the creator. And what's man do? What does man do? Let's go to Romans chapter 1. Let me find it here real quick. Romans chapter 1. I'm looking for it. Romans chapter 121, because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. The trees, the rocks, the elephants. The rhinos, neither were thankful. They don't thank God on the Thanksgiving day anymore, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Professing themselves to be wise, education, degrees, they became fools. And changed the glory of an uncorruptible God, uncorruptible, pure, into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creepy things. This hymn, Ferris Lord Jesus, hits against evolution. It goes against the creation worship, but changes us to worship the creator over the creation. To God be the glory. He deserves it. Not only did he create us, but he suffered and died for us. He gave his life that we may have eternal life. Ought oh, to be Jesus Christ that's worshiped and praised. 